When I realized the potential of working with glass and the metals together and some of the different things you could do with them. Mm -hmm. Not just the, I've done restoration, but not necessarily the restoration, but taking a form or an idea, putting it on paper and then saying, how can I manipulate this into a glass piece? Because, you know, it's just like any field, you know, you have people that will fill up the, the rows with, you know, people that are painters, but there's only a very few that know really how to manipulate the, the medium. So I, I always try to think outside the box and I come up with ideas and I challenge myself to do something unusual that people haven't seen before, that type of thing. So you talk about engineering, I can understand that. And then you, all of a sudden you go, oh, you know, there's a passion I have. And this became my passion. It's not just a job, it's a passion. And as I, as I started studying people like uh, Tiffany or John Lafarge, um, Antonio Gaudi, um, just some of their types of work, I thought, wow, there's, there's a whole new avenue here that we haven't even explored. And so when I look at that, I, I, again, I challenged myself and I said, man, we could do something very, very unusual and very wonderful if we just take the time and and um, manipulate things a little different. Like let's say this is an example window right here. Uh, with something like this, I start out with the form, and I, I really enjoy the Art Nouveau period. That all the curvilinear shapes. I'm kind of get away from the uh, you know the Mission period straight lines and stuff. That mm. just doesn't fascinate me anymore. Mm. It did back in mm. the day. But just to get a lot of curvilinear shapes happening, like within these areas through here, it's pretty much like if you, t if you took a coloring book, a child's coloring book, and you have the dark lines, that represents the lead king, or the center of the lead mm. king, which is called the heart of the king. And so what you're doing is pretty much drawing a large uh, coloring book yeah. uh, page. Uh, and from that, then um, what you're going to do is, once you have your pattern down into full scale, then the challenging thing really begins. Because I believe this, you can make a beautiful pattern and choose some terrible glass mm. that just fight against each other. Right? You've seen it in painting many yeah. times. Yeah. You know, why did you paint that turquoise or chartreuse, that type of thing. And so what I did is I, I studied the interaction of the colors with each other. Uh, as an example, maybe this particular pale green amber in this ground will pretty much go with any color. Okay, so it's a safe color to use. So then I determine, okay, what are my colors that I really love to use, like this deep bluish purple. I thought this was very striking. And one of my favorites is the, the copper-toned glass. You know, and they work really well together right through this area right here. And every work is an experiment. <laughs> Right? You start out and you think, this is a great idea, great colors, and you get to the end and say, oh, I wish I would have done this differently. In high school, I studied machining. Mm -hmm. You know, the making of metal tools and parts, and how do you use this machine to get this shape? And um, we were holding to, like, tolerances of a thousandth of an inch. So, you know, I mean, you had to be accurate with the machines and what you were doing. Um, math, I loved math. It was one of my favorite subjects, math and art. Um, math I still use extensively today. It's the use of math in, um, in starting out with your initial uh, scale drawing and then taking that scale drawing and enlarging it to full scale. So you have to do some architectural things as far as how do you do this. Angular cuts, angular um, interpretations. The Roby House at the time, the uh, Kunli Estate, uh, Unity Temple, a little bit of Unity Temple work, um, and numerous repairs at the Potomac House and Heller House and Davenport, and, I, and I'm sure there's a few more. Mm -hmm. So I was very fortunate to be at the, that place at the right time, I guess. Um, so I gained a lot of experience in those areas. Um, I worked on a Tiffany window one time, which was, I think, is now in the Historical Society in Chicago. Make sure it's a passion. Because if it's not a passion, uh, they can work in it for an indefinite period of time, but at some point, they're just not going to want to persist in going any further. Slow and methodical. Don't be in a rush to get things done, because usually when you cut corners, uh, it shows. You know? 
So I would say that slow, methodical, building up slowly. Keep building up, keep moving on, keep looking for new ideas. Don't be satisfied with, you know, this particular piece you've just done. In some ways, yes, but learn from it and then stretch yourself and say, hey, I want to do something better Pleasure. next time. I want to keep moving on. I'm not content, you know, uh, with what's in front of me here. Oh, always learning, yeah. Always, always interested in what other artists are doing because they influence me too. Not just the past artists, you know, the people that are now are gone, but present artists. What are they doing? Movies. When I've seen some of these animated movies, uh, Robots, which was a very interesting animated um, movie, I saw these Art Deco shapes in there, some wonderful colors. Um, that I or Rise of the Guardians or something like that where you have these wonderful colors and forms coming together a lot of futuristic things mm -hmm. though right it really is would be like uh, The Hobbit or um, of course Lord of the Rings where you have all this gothic architectural styles and that has influenced me too because I really I love that period of time um, again I think Art Nouveau is probably the design part of it is extremely important. Again, it's a learning process. Yeah, it really yeah, is. Yeah. Training. Um, what's that? Uh, um, practice, 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 right?